So, good morning. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, Mr. Francisco, does he speak yeah. any English at all? Uh, not, not very well. Ms. Ms. Mary Fuentes was sitting in the translate for him, but that's all right. Yeah, that's good. We were, uh, we were, yeah. Would you, uh, we want Mr. Francisco, tell us your name and DOC number. Francisco Gauna, 58, 31, 31. Gauna, I said it. Okay. Uh, so let me open it up. Stand by. So the first name is Francisco. Uh, and here is Gauna. So his name is Francisco, Francisco, Francisco Gauna. And here is Gauna. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm going to call you Francisco. Okay, yeah. Okay? Yes. Sir. All right. So, Mr. Francisco, you're serving a 15-year sentence for indecent behavior with a juvenile. You want to help me? Out to us. Está sirviendo una sentencia de 15 años. Yes. Yes. He does not earn good time. His full term date is in August 2024. Yes. Um, Mr. Francisco had a hearing um, let me see, in 2020 and he was denied. Does he, I'd like for him to tell us why he was denied. Se recuerda cuando tuvo la cita la última vez en 2020? Le negaron la salida. La gente de Parol me dice, cara a la víctima y no contesta. La víctima no contesta, entonces... Uh, okay, he understands that the reason he was denied was because of the DA's opposition. Okay. Um, I'd like for him to tell us, Mr. Francisco, what was the age of your victims? There were three victims. What were their ages? O sea, ¿cuántas no, víctimas y cuáles son las edades? Eight nine years. He said there's only two victims, eight and nine years old. What was his relationship to the victims? ¿Cuál era su relación? Eh, ellos eran nietos de la mujer con la que yo vivía. Nietos. They were grandkids of his uh, girlfriend, ex uh, girlfriend at the time. All right. And uh, Mr. Francisco, you completed sex offender treatment? Yes. Yeah. What did you learn? La forma de hacer uno, ¿no? que no debe ser uno, o sea, las cosas que, que, que no debe ser uno. Todo eso lo aprendí ahí, este, como pude, pero lo aprendí. He learned a lot. He learned things about what not to do and things that he was supposed to know that he should have done. Okay. And um, has he had, I don't know how to ask, any drug? I understand Mr. Francisco has 
an opioid disorder? Has he done any substance abuse treatment? He has not taken any um, my, substance abuse. My program was more about problem than alcohol. I worked at night and alcohol. His drug of choice was alcohol, but he has not done any substance abuse treatment. All right. Um, okay. I don't have any other questions. Uh, Warden, what can you tell us about Mr. Francisco? Uh, like his record indicates, he hasn't had any disciplinary write-ups. He hasn't had any trouble. I would like to see him uh, complete uh, victim impact. Yes. Okay. Is there anything, Mr. Francisco, anything you would like to say to us before we vote? Antes de que terminen el voto, ¿quiere decirles algo? Primero que nada, este, thank you for recibirme, pedir perdón a la comunidad, a ellos, a las víctimas, familia, mi familia. I have a lot of people who have lo que pasó y el tiempo que estaba encerrado lo have a lot of people más que nada quiero salir regresar y buscar mi familia recuperar mi familia y trabajar para ellos ver a mi padre y cuidarme okay he says first and foremost he wants to thank you for this opportunity um he is sorry for what happened he is sorry to the victims, to the community. Um, he would like, uh, upon release, to um, reinstate his relationship with his family. After I don't know, I, he does not know where his family is at, so he would like to locate his family and try to reinstate a relationship with them. And he has learned his lesson about what happened and knows it, understands that it's wrong. Uh, Mr. Francisco, are you aware there's an ICE immigration detainer? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Um, Mr. Francisco, I think we're prepared to vote. I'll be voting first. Uh, as mentioned at your last hearing, the DA was opposed. The law, there were law enforcement opposition. Uh, the DA was opposed, and, and Mary, help me if I need to stop so you can tell okay. anyone. Else. Let me let me just tell. Um, van a votar. Nada más te quiere decir que la uh, alguna de las razones que vienen o los la, oficiales, el DA, el de uh, de abogados, sí. eh, todos están en oficial. No no le van a no bueno no le and the DA, uh, there was a plea agreement at sentencing. He agreed to his sentence. Based on all that information, my vote today is to deny his parole. Well, Este, usted estaba de acuerdo con los oficiales que iba a servir la sentencia de día. Excuse me. Uh, no sé si venga el caso, ok, pero lo voy a hablar porque esto me está ahogando. Yo, yo estuve por un año vuelta y vuelta a mi casa, la, no firmando a los 15 años, no aceptando mis 15 años, ok. Después de un año, yo ya firmé, ellos me perdieron un trato. O sea, siete y medio de los quince. Y firma, y firma, y yo no quiero firmar, ¿verdad? Porque mi abogado no estaba bien. Para mí no estaba bien. Entonces, yo firmé, ya firmé el papel, me licenciaron, me dieron los quince años, pero supuestamente yo lo sé siete y medio, que nunca recibí siete y medio. Ok, por favor. He just wants to clarify that during his sentencing, he is, uh, after a year going back and forth, uh, he had agreed that his sentence was 15 years, but he would serve seven and a half. And that was never afforded to him. So
So he just wants to state that for the record. All right, thank you, Ms. Lyon. Okay. Uh, good morning, lady. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my, my vote is the same. Uh, I see a need for long-term substance abuse treatment and the victim impact as the warden indicated. For those reasons, my vote is to deny. Mrs. Jackson. Ella también le va a rechazar porque ella piensa que usted todavía necesita ese víctima impacto clase y tratamiento de drogas y alcohol. All right, Mr. Gowan, uh, my vote is a little bit different. Uh, I voted to grant conditionally upon completion of victim awareness and substance abuse uh, program. Uh, when you get out on uh, August 28th of 24, you'll be out without any kind of supervision. And so I would prefer there to be at least a little while of supervision, uh, but that's just one vote. So that would be my vote. Okay. Ella, ella tú le va a dar el voto de Right. So he he understands because he got two votes to deny. It's denied. Correct. Right. Yeah. Thank. His girlfriend's grandchildren. His girlfriend's grandchildren, nine years old. And eight years old. You know, it's something that you you watch these more and more, and and and, it, and you just see the pattern unfold, and it becomes more and more clear how these cockroaches find ways to gain access to children. They date people with children that they are interested in. They marry them. They date them. They do everything in their power to create this persona so that they can enter the lives of someone with children so they can prey on them. And you, you know, I think about that and it, when you actually think about it and try to digest it, it's, it's just insane. How it, it's an obsession, right? It's the, it's their focus of their life. And then if you can understand that and believe that, then you know that no matter what happens, he is going to harm again. He is going to find more children 
to hurt. Because he can't help it. It's what drives him. It's his main focus. It's where all his energy will go. And there is no number of programs that will change that. And I just don't get how judges give these 15 and 15 year sentence. That's pretty darn good for Louisiana. I mean, we're so used to seeing two, three, four, seven. It would be like, okay, 15. And Miss Jackson, I don't, I don't get it, Miss Jackson. You know, you say, well, I, I want to. He's getting out anyways in like a year, so we want to have some type of supervision. But I don't get it. I don't get the logic there at all. One is, is that ICE has a retainer, so in theory, I don't know if it works this way. I don't know how well organized they are or how determined ice is but you you know someone can put in the comment section people probably know who are watching this but my assumption is that he walks out of prison and there's ice waiting there to handcuff him and deport him or go through whatever the process is i don't know anything about this maybe not though But I would just argue that one more year of children being safe is more important than one year of supervision. Like, what's the super like? I, it's only in it's only one year of supervision anyway. So it's like, then what? I believe that as long as this man is alive, he is a threat too and will harm children. That's so scary. You know, I, I do fully believe that his defense attorney and probably the DA when they made the deal for him said, yeah, you'll, you'll serve seven and a half years. It didn't work out that way for him. I also, I also do question whether he doesn't actually understand English. I just find it hard to believe that you can spend 14 years in a prison and not learn the language uh, that is uh, of that prison. I, 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 I do think it's just another manipulation tool. I mean, um, it go, it goes out throughout history, I'm like a, you know, if, if someone knows the language of their adversary, you pretend that you don't because it gives you some type of edge. And um, I'm going to assume that he learned English over 14 years being in a locked up and that he's just using it as an edge. There's a big benefit to have time to think and have an interpreter there to use that for your to your advantage. And um, I think it just goes to show how manipulative and as, as a, we say cockroach these These people are, these people who hurt children, it's just their life. They are master manipulators. And he even needed to have some type of last word. And, and you, you heard his voice rise up in, in kind of like anger. Uh, he wanted it to be known that he was promised he would only serve seven and a half years and he 
didn't. He has to serve the whole 15. You should know that. You should let me out early. He says, I know now that it's wrong. I would never do it again. You know now that it's wrong? Really? You know now that it's wrong to do that to your girlfriend's grandkids? You didn't know it was wrong before? It would have been wrong if they were 30 years old. You're dating her. <laughs> like, what? But no, they're actually eight, nine years old. They're children. And yet our system does not do anything to protect our children because a 15 year sentence, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. And they say, well, we don't want to go to trial because of the trauma that will cause the child. There's a lot of things that can go wrong in a trial. There are mistrials and juries are weird and all that stuff. But I, I have a hard time. I have a hard time settling for that. I have a hard time. I, I understand it. And I believe that if the mother of these children came to me and said, well, we just, we can't, we can't do a trial. I wouldn't push them for a trial, right? I just I could, you know, okay, we'll do, we'll do the plea deal. I get that part. But I also believe that there is a part and a percentage of times, and I don't know how many, how much it is and what the, where the DA um, is just kind of lazy. They don't want to go to trial. They just want to do a plea deal. And I, I don't base that just on my assumptions. I'm now watching enough of these uh, court hearings. Richard sends me a lot of stuff from other courts and I see uh, plea deals being offered and judges turning in them down and saying, no, 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 no. We're not doing a plea deal. This is this roach. This is his third offense. How? No, we're going to trial. We're putting him over. He's facing life. Why would you offer him 10 years? So I know it can happen. And I think it's up to the judge and the DA to think, Look, if this predator gets out, he will harm another child. And the question is not if, but how many children, how many more until he gets caught? How many, how many more until he gets caught? It's, uh, and, 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 it, and, it, and it, it, it is up to them. They are the gatekeepers. They are supposed to be protecting the communities that vote them into office. And I think that's the most, one of the most incredible things that we've gotten out of, I guess, COVID is, is, are these hearings that are getting moved to, to YouTube where the public can access it and see what's happening 
and things will change eventually because of this. More people will see it, more people will be aware, more people will demand change, and those responsible for giving these little sentences, they will realize that their actions are being watched. And I do think that things eventually will change. I do have hope. But that's my thoughts. Um, one more thing that that is great is that if you Google this man's name after this YouTube hearing is up, it should be one of the first things that show up. And I guess that's our part in protecting children because he gets out and he starts to roach his way into someone's life and someone has spidey senses and just Google him, boom. This will come up. So it's our way to fight back, huh? And with that, I'll let you go.